I've always wanted to be good at sports ever since I was little, be really good at sports, impress my friends and stuff. But I, I'm such a theater nerd that one time I was talking about football and I forgot the word quarterback. <laughs> and I saw him and I panicked. I saw him and I was like, oh, he, he, he plays the lead. He's not one of the understays on the bench. He's a star. He's the best one. <laughs> I only played football once. I was 10 years old. Little Lee made me a lineman. <laughs> That's the right response. Because now it's my job to protect the main character. This isn't even the part that I auditioned for, all right? I would have loved the role of team manager or something backstage. But of course, the kid across from me is the black dude from the Green Mile, so he's the biggest person I've ever seen in my entire life. And they blow the whistle, and he hit me so hard that there was a divot in the ground where my shoulder went in. I got up, I didn't even tell anybody that I quit. I just started walking off stage. I started walking off, I was done. Took off my football costume, because that's what I called it. I was done. I wasn't gonna play more, but then the director runs up and gives me a speech about being a quitter. I was like, obviously, sir, you didn't see what just happened, okay? I might be 10 on my right side for the rest of my life. And then they make this big kid come up and apologize to me, which he shouldn't have to do. You know, it's not his fault. I should be also there playing Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or something. <laughs> but he walked up to me, towering over me, blocking out the sun, leaning over me, and was like, I'm sorry. It's like, that's interesting. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five. We're all 10 here, sir. Why are you 32, okay? <laughs> I didn't even make it to intermission. There was no way I was getting through four acts of that game. I was done. <laughs> I moved on to basketball, which was a different mistake. I thought needing height to play basketball was a suggestion. It's not. I was walking home one day and these kids on the public court asked me if I want to play a game of pickup with them. And I don't know, you know, I ran home and ran back real fast. Cause I don't know if you play pickup with a bunch of strangers, but it's a lot like having friends. I was very excited. So I ran home and ran back some shorts that were far too short. I was out there. I was out there looking like a dad, just like, you're not getting past me, buddy. Are you like, oh, 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 no, 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 no. It's one of the worst mistakes in my life. This kid, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, jumped over me and dunked. I'm guarding him and he just flew away. Which should be against the rules. If he's allowed to fly, I should at least get a knife to cut an Achilles or something. Like, you're not gonna fly over me twice, sir. This dude jumped over me and dunked the ball so hard that he cracked the glass on the backboard. The ball hit me on top of my head. I hit the ground. He hung there for a second and then landed, straddling me, got his face this close to mine and was like, ooh. <laughs> he dunked on me so hard that that night I dreamed he was my dad. Like, I've never, <laughs> never been more terrified. I don't know what my problem is, you know? I'm gonna tell you guys something, because we're a family, okay? I'm gonna tell you something I'll tell a lot of people. I don't, I don't even feel black some days. <laughs> I feel like an alien that snatched a black by and didn't do any research at all, didn't do anything, <laughs> didn't read a book, didn't watch a movie, doesn't know what Boys in the Hood is, but loves trains. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't know if I haven't had enough dates for a grown man or too many dates for someone who's autistic because I'm definitely on the spectrum. <laughs> I talk about sharks too much on the front end of the conversation. <laughs> I do know what one of my problems is. I lived alone too long. Yeah. I think everybody should live alone and be single for at least a year, you know? Get to know yourself, right, right? Get to figure yourself out, because maybe it's you. <laughs> you know, you get to live alone, get to be single, get to figure out what's going on in here. But if you do it too long, you just evolve into a monster. 
to have a downward spiral. The first few months of living alone that you live alone are the most liberating months of your entire life. And the next months of living alone that you live alone are the most depressing months of your entire life. <laughs> I had the weekend off the first month I ever lived alone. I was like, ooh, looks like somebody's gonna be naked for the next three days. I gotta wear clothes for nobody. I'm be naked over here, naked over here. It's gonna be great. I had that same weekend off six months later, I was like, what's the point of clothes? <laughs> now, I knew I was depressing my friends. I started getting gifts that were purely just to keep me alive. <laughs> I just started getting puzzles left and right. <laughs> my one friend, he gave me a cake, which would normally be nice, but he gave me too much cake. He gave me seven eighths of a huge, huge chocolate birthday cake. And I think in his head, he was like, this came alive at least a week and then I've done my part. I can't, I can't babysit, you know? But living alone, being single, that's too much freedom. I need a girlfriend or a roommate now just to shame me back to reality. You can do whatever you want. I can do whatever I want, no consequences anytime I want. I got in the shower with an umbrella to see how it would feel. You looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. I got naked, all right? Got in the shower, turned the wall, and lifted the umbrella. It's like, it does feel like rain. Will someone call today? Oh, it's just like being outside. Except I control the weather. <laughs> <laughs>